what does it mean when a bottle says that it's aged in European oak or American oak? Like, what's the difference? But what about when a bottle says that it's aged in American oak casks, but also sherry oak casks? Like, is sherry oak the same as European oak? Welcome to First Fill, I'm Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in with everything whiskey lovers should know about oak. So oak is a really important part of whiskey and there's three reasons why it's used with whiskey and the first is law. So by law, all scotch to be called scotch has to be aged in oak for a minimum of three years. Now this is not true for some other countries where they can do a little bit less than three years or some countries where they can age in other types of wood like Canada and Ireland. So the second reason is practical. So oak is really high in Tylusis, which means that it's really good at storing liquids, which is why it was used a lot for the transportation of alcohol. Kind of before that, they used to use clay jars and clay pots, and but they're kind of fragile and they break a lot. But with oak, you know, it was sturdy and you could send it around the continent. And there are actually some species of oak which are higher in Tylusis than other species, but we'll get into that shortly. And the third reason is flavour. You see, these days you can actually transport alcohol pretty easily with plastic or steel and that sort of thing, and it's probably going to be better than oak. So what most people want to use oak for is actually the flavour it imparts. That top milk, that cream, pure vanilla. Onto new mag, onto moonshine, and turning it into quality whiskey, which is what brings us to species. So there are a couple of different ways that oak is classed. So one is the species, you know, what kind of oak it is, and the other is the location, or what people might call the terroir. Generally, when you know the location, you can kind of assume what the species will be, but not always, there are exceptions which we will get into later in the video. So let's start with the species. So oak is a kind of tree from the genus Quercus, and like grape varieties, there are actually over 500 different types of oak. However, only white oak is used with whiskey. That's because red oak is not really good at holding liquids, and it's mainly used for making things like furniture. And because most oak types are generally unsuited for making casks, there are three types of white oak that are by far the most popular within barrel production. So first, there's two European oak types, and both of these are also known as European oak. The first is Quercus patria, and the second is Quercus roba. And then there's one American oak type, which is by far the most common you'll find within barrel production in the whiskey industry, and that is Quercus alba, also known as American oak. But let's talk about the European oak types first. So the two European species of oak, Ruba and Petria, are often found in various places around Europe and often intermingled and interbred. And this is why often on a whiskey bottle you won't see it defined which type of European oak it is, because you know it might be a hybrid. In terms of differences though, Ruba's often got longer branches so it can provide a little bit more shade. Then we will fight in the shade. But they both can grow over 25 meters and they both can live over 300 years. In terms of alcohol though, generally Petria is considered better for like wines, like white wine, whereas Ruba is considered better for spirits, especially brandy, like cognac and armagnac. So European oak is really high in a molecule called eugenol, which can add those sort of dry spice notes like nutmeg, allspice, black pepper and clove. It's also high in a tannin called gallic acid, which can add those sort of slight bitter notes to a whiskey. Comparing the two European oak species though, Ruba often has more chocolate and tannins and dried fruit notes, whereas Petria often has less tannins and a much more aromatic character. So let's talk about the American oak, Quercus alba. So this oak is the most common oak used within Scotch whiskey. And that's because it's really high in Tylusis, which means that it can be sawn rather than hand split. French oak uh, is very different than American oak. American oak, you can cut it. Yes. Uh, you sew it. As uh, French oak, you need to split it. So it means that the labour cost of making barrels with this oak is a lot less than using European oak. 
So American oak is really high in a molecule called vanillin, which as you guessed it, can add those sort of vanilla flavors. It's also high in a molecule called lactone, which can add those sort of sweet coconut flavors. But you can find other notes like citric, cinnamon, and caramel notes, toffee and tea notes. And also American oak will add probably less color than European oak. However, too much flavor from the wood can actually dominate the spirit and add too many tannins and sort of over oak the whiskey. And that's why most Scotch and world whiskey, except for bourbon, like to age their whiskey in casks that have previously had another liquid in it, like sherry or bourbon. And what these liquids can do is they can reduce the tannins and kind of soften the wood down and remove some of those over oaked flavors, but also impart their own flavors, like sherry can add those sort of dry fruit notes and those nutty notes, and bourbon can add those sort of toffee, caramel, and brown sugar notes. Those you Used barrels, we ship those off to some island and they make scotch. So there are some other factors that can also influence how a whiskey ends up tasting. The first is the charring process and how long that goes for and that sort of thing. The second is the size of the cask. So a smaller cask, we have a higher ratio of spirit to wood contact. So it will give a very different result than a much larger cask. And the next one is the cooper and how the cask is actually made. And the fourth is the location. You could have the same species of oak and have two different casks. However, they could give you two different flavors just because the two trees are grown in two places across a continent. So I've had quite a few of you come to my videos saying, oh, like the editing or, oh, great motion graphics. But the thing is, I haven't always known how to edit. And I'm a big believer in lifelong learning that, you know, you've never truly learned everything and you can always learn new skills. And that's why I'm very thankful for today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes. It's all about investing in yourself, enabling you to discover your own creativity and new skills, helping you with whatever you want to do. So you probably saw at the start of the video, I had my new logo and it was like animating like a whale swimming around and stuff. And that is a new skill I learned to do, which is now going to help this channel. And um, there's a course that was really good to watch. It's called Animating with Ease in Adobe After Effects by Jake Barlett. But there's a massive variety of other classes on there as well that will probably help you with your goals and whatever you want to do. Classes like leadership and marketing and videography. And, and it's all ad free and it's subtitled too in Spanish, Portuguese, French and German. So if you want to try Skillshare free for a whole month, click the link down below and yeah, imagine what you could learn in a whole month. But it's only available for the first 1,000 people. So yeah, click it. Back to the show. So that brings us to location. So the location of where the oak tree is grown is where a lot of confusion can actually arise for people just trying to figure out a whiskey label. But generally, if you're to generalize, European oak is grown in Europe and American oak is grown in America. But not always, <laughs> there are exceptions. But let's talk about America. So if you have a barrel, it's made of oak, and it's in America, it very likely will be Quercus Alba. And that's why Quercus Alba is just generally known as American oak. So there are two densely populated oak regions in the United States. The first is the Appalachian chain and that includes places like Virginia, Kentucky and Ohio. And the second is the Ozarks which includes places like Missouri. And I actually have a bottle that talks about it specifically in the Ozarks. So it's this one here, the Glen Morangi Aster. And it talks about specifically on the bottle that the wood variant is Quercus alba and it's a slow growth type of variant. It's from the tall peaks of Missouri Ozark. We'll just try a little bit eh? There's a lot of white fruit notes, peaches, apricot, a lot of butter. There's a lot of like lemony notes. Very nice. To be honest though, you can actually find oak throughout the US like California and Minnesota, but generally for bourbon maturation or for Scotch lovers, ex-bourbon casks, it's gonna be from Kentucky, which is part of the Appalachian chain, or Missouri, which is part of the Ozax. A little side note though, Quercus Roba has actually been introduced to America, but I haven't actually heard of an example of where it's been used for barrel production for whiskey. It's mainly been used for timber from what I heard. And another side note, there actually is a subspecies of Quercus alba called chinkapin. 
and apparently adds some more kind of spicy aromas and flavors. And there's actually a Glenallachie that ages its whiskey in chinkapin casks. So you might be asking, why do Scotch makers like to age their whiskey so much in American oak? There's two reasons. The first is the British, they chop down a lot of trees. For shipbuilding back in the day, there wasn't really the big forests that you get in America. And the second is the strict laws that are on bourbon because of the whole virgin oak thing. So there was just an abundance of casks. So with both of those, it just made it a lot cheaper to buy casks from America than source them from Britain. But some Scotch distilleries love American oak so much they actually own entire forests like McAllen, apparently they're in a forest over there. I was just like, oh yeah, we'll have one of those forests, please. One of those, thanks. And I went and bought one. Okay, so let's go to Europe. So obviously the two dominant species are gonna be Quercus roba and Quercus betria. So the further east you go in Europe, the more you're gonna find Quercus roba, especially inland environments, by streams and by rivers. So that's why you probably find quite a lot of it in Hungary, which is where a lot of distilleries and wineries like to get their barrels made because it can be a little bit cheaper than in France. Whereas Petria prefers sort of hills and maritime climates and rocky places, hence the Latin term Petria, which means of rocky places. And it's gonna be more dominant in countries like Wales and Germany, whereas Roba can kind of grow in more environments throughout Europe. Hence the Latin term for roba, which means robust. But what is French oak? So this category can be a complicated rabbit hole, especially if you're into wine. So there's some super famous French oak forests, which have been a revenue source for France for centuries. So generally the more dominant species is gonna be Quercus patria, especially in these places. But there is a famous exception called Limousin oak, which is made using Quercus roba. And it's mainly used for aging cognac. And there are some whiskies that age their whiskies in ex Limousin oak, like there's a good Mac Meyer example. But but you can find Quercus roba in some other places in France as well. But generally, overall, French oak is not going to be as common with whiskey as Spanish oak and American oak. But if you have a whiskey that's finished in an ex wine cask or an ex cognac cask, pretty much is going to be French oak. So Spanish oak, so in Spain and I guess Portugal as well, the dominant species is going to be Quercus roba over Petria. And generally it's mostly grown in the northern parts of the peninsula by the Atlantic coast. So this is where confusion can arise for the whiskey consumer between European oak and American oak. So most people when they grab a bottle and it says that it's aged in an ex-sherry cask, the automatic assumption is that it's going to be aged in European oak that's grown in Spain, you know, from Petria or Roba. However, this is more likely actually not going to be true. And that's because when distilleries want to buy an ex sherry seasoned cask, they normally deal with one of these big sort of seasoning companies. And basically they can choose what sort of cask they want, you know, what size it is, what type of sherry it's seasoned with, and what type of oak it is. And surprisingly, the most common type of oak, and it's going to be the cheaper option as well, is actually American oak. And that's because these big seasoning companies can import the oak straight from America. And often actually Quercus alba, the American oak, is actually grown in Spain as well. So when you see a bottle that says, you know, sherry oak or Spanish oak, it actually doesn't really tell you a lot because it's most likely going to be a sherry cask that's made from American oak. So there are some other types of oak around the world. You often see whiskey aged in, especially distilleries in Japan, which like to use Mizunara oak, which is oak that's native to China and South Korea, Japan, Mongolia, and Siberia. And so this oak's real interesting. It has kind of a sweet and spicy kind of flavor profile, but you also find things like sandalwood and incense and citrus, but it also shares a lot of common traits with American oak because it's high in lactones, which means it's gonna give you some of that coconut kind of flavors. It's Obviously this is just a YouTube video, not a university lecture, so I've barely scratched the surface for all things oak. But if you feel like a big part or something's been missed from this, make sure you leave a comment down below. And can you tell the difference between different oak types and whiskey, or have you before? Leave a comment down below, but also give the video a like, subscribe if you like all things whiskey, and thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. But above all, cheer and enjoy. Beauty. <laughs>